Greetings, guys. My name is Andy Anderson, but I think you already know that. I could take this lesson and use it to show you, say, maybe 10 really cool features in Photoshop, and I think there's more than 10, but I chose to do this a little bit differently. I want to show you some power tips, things that have been around for a while, I will agree, but things that can save you time. I am a nut for getting things done more efficiently. I work and have worked with major companies in the United States to save them more time, workflow efficiency. If I can get more done using the same amount of time, basically I have more time to maybe keep working on that project and get it better or spend that time doing something else. So in this lesson, let's talk about 10 things that I think are really important to understand about Photoshop to get more efficient. Tip number one. You're working in Adobe Photoshop and you're moving things around. You're rearranging the furniture. Like, for example, you bring layers out like this so you get better access to it. And I do that a lot in teaching so you know exactly what I'm working on. And eventually you have stuff all over the place. And that really isn't unusual. I'm not just making this up. You move this stuff around. Murphy's Law steps up to the plate and basically whatever you're working on is underneath one of these. So you move it. Now this is an oldie but a goldie. It's the tab key. If you press the tab key on your keyboard, it eliminates all of your panels, all of your tools, and allows you free access to work on this image. Now if you know how to do shortcuts to get to the tools, you can still work. If you press tab again, they all come back. But maybe you don't mind temporarily losing control of your panels, but you still want your toolbar. Then you hold the shift key down and press tab, and the tools stay, the panel goes away. So shift tab or tab by itself, and if you know how to use shortcuts, you can still keep on working. Tip number two, brush size. Now, how important is the brush in Photoshop? Not just for painting, cloning tools, healing tools, all kinds of tools, dodge, burn, they all use a brush size and a shape. Now, I'm painting along or whatever, I'll use the paintbrush as an example, and I'm painting in the foreground color, which is black way down here and you decide you need a smaller brush. You're cloning and you need a smaller or larger area. So you can come up here and you can change the size and even the hardness of the brush right here. You can click here and get all kinds of options if you want to. All I really want to do is change the brush size. So remember the left and right bracket keys. Left is smaller and right is larger. You say that's kind of a harsh edge on that. I would rather have a softer edge. So if I come and press the left and right bracket keys while I'm holding the shift key, it changes what it does. If I hold the shift key down and press the left bracket key, it makes the brush softer. And if I use the right bracket key, it makes it harder. But that's not all. Let me show you one more thing real quick. I'm painting in black. Yes, I could come over here and choose another color. But another way to do that, let's assume maybe you don't even have the swatches panel open. If I have a color that exists in the image that I want to use, all I have to do is hold the Alt key down, and that is the Alt key in Windows and the Option key on a Mac, and just click somewhere. And it will change the color of the brush for me. A lot of times when I'm working on a photograph, I actually have, it's like a palette, and it's got colors just like in watercolors or oil colors, and I go over there and I choose the colors that I need. So changing brush size and also changing the color of the brush is my tip number two. Tip number three. You're working on an image like this and you decide you want to change some of the highlight yellow colors. So maybe you do something like this. You come over and you pick up your magic wand tool and you click on some of the yellow with contiguous off up here, which means select it all. And you get this big area of all these yellow areas on the image based on the tolerance of the magic wand. And maybe you come up to image adjustments and go into something like you and saturation. And you start moving things around. But the problem is. You can't really tell how it's interacting with the image simply because that marquee is in the way. You would like to still have the selection, but you don't want the dotted line. You want to hide it. It's very easy. Hold down the Control key in Windows, Command key on a Mac, and press the letter H. Now, when you change things, it still works, but you're not distracted. Now, the problem with that is sometimes I forget that I have a hidden area that's a selection and nothing works the way it's supposed to because there's still a selection on the screen. So I'll finish it off sometimes with a Control and Windows Command on a Mac D as in deselect. And there you go. So my tip number three basically is showing and hiding the crawling ant marquee.
tip number four, a down and dirty way to fill an area with color. So you've got a logo or something that you're working on. You want to change one of the colors. You pick up the paint bucket tool. There's a much faster way to fill an area with color than using the paint bucket. For example, if I come over here and pick up my magic wand tool, I could click in here and select that area. So I could use the paint bucket tool to fill it if I wanted to. I could use the fill command under edit to do the same thing. But the shortcut for filling an area with the current foreground or background color, and let's start by choosing a color, is simply, and this is different on Mac and Windows, same keys, just different names. On a Macintosh system, hold down the Option key and press the Delete key. On a Windows system, hold the Alt key and press the Backspace key. Same keys, different names. Now, if you want to fill it with the current background color, which ours is white right now, what you want to do is hold down on a Mac the Command key and the Delete key. And if you're on Windows, it's the Control key and the Backspace key. Just a very quick way to fill an area or a selection with the current foreground and or background color. Tip number five, controlling the opacity and the flow of the brush on the fly. So you're working with some paintbrushes or whatever, you're using a brush, and you're over here, you're painting. Now it does the foreground color, and it also has an opacity up here of 100%, and a flow of 100%. But you want a lighter brush. So while you're painting down here, you stop, and you press one of the number keys on the top of your keyboard from 0 to 9. And if I press the number 5, I get 50% opacity. If I press the number 1, 10%. But if I press, say, for example, 3, 5, I get 35%. So you can change the opacity. To change the flow of the brush, simply use the Shift key along with the numbers. So if I do a Shift 4, I get a 40% flow. All of these shortcuts are designed to keep you productive and not constantly going to menus and pulling things down. Tip number five the opacity, and the flow of the brush. Tip number six, blending modes. Now, I absolutely love blending modes. Blending modes, to me, just really help you put things together. They blend two or more layers together, just like that. We have all kinds of them. I teach class at university an entire semester, and all we do is talk about blending modes. They are really cool to work with. But let's say you're just wanting to cycle through them and get an idea of what might be the best. We can come over here and do them one at a time, obviously. But here's a trick. Hold down the Shift key and press the plus or minus keys. Now watch what happens. I'm cycling through each one of them. That's a very quick way to find the one you want. Use negative to go back the way you can. Tip number six, cycling through blending modes. Tip number seven creating a workable comp. Now we have three different layers here. Border, name, and the image itself. So if I'm working, say, to apply a filter, it's only going to work on one of them at a time, but maybe I want to basically see what it would look like with a filter applied to all three layers, say, at the same time. So I can come up to this button here, which is Options for Layers, and go down to Flatten the Image. But I've lost control. So I'm going to press Undo, which is my favorite key in the whole world. Let me show you a trick here. Go up to the top and then go back to that button right here. We have an option called Merge Visible. All the layers are visible, but don't click it until you hold on the Alt key, and that's the Alt key in Windows Option key on a Mac, and click and boom, what you have now is a comp. That's a compilation of all of the visible layers. We can now try, practice, whatever we want to do, and we still have the control of the items that are down here. Merging visible layers into a comp is my tip number seven. Tip number eight, the simple cap lock key. Now, when you're working with tools, like say the lasso, and you're making a selection, a lot of people say, where is the hot spot on the selection? It's usually where that little arrow is, like that. But sometimes I want a little bit more of a precision type of tool. And I'll have students that say, well, Andy, you know, I don't get that tool. I get like crosshairs. What am I doing? Well, you've got the cap lock key pressed. If you press the cap lock key down, all of your tools go to nice, precise, precision tools. Press cap lock again, and they go back to cute little icons. So tip number eight, down and dirty and simple, the cap lock key. Tip number nine, quick selection of layers from the layers panel. As you can see, I have the red layer selected over here. 
if I come over and touch the blue one, I'm still going to move the red one because it's selected. This is not Adobe Illustrator object oriented. Now I could come over here and do it that way and then select and move it and no matter where I go it's still going to move that one. But there's a quicker way to do it. You have an option up here called Auto Select and if you turn that on and say Layer, if I come over here and click on this one it will select it. But in Photoshop to me that can be frustrating because I don't realize it as much as I do in say Adobe Illustrator and I'm dragging things I don't want to drag because I'm used to the layer being selected and being default. I'm going to turn that off. Here's a quick way to use it when you need it. If I want to select the blue one over here, hold down the command key and that's the control key in Windows command on a Mac and click and it will select it. If I come over here again, it's still selected. But if I command click or control click on the yellow one, it will select that one. It's just a quick way to select any layer that you want very quickly. Tip number 10, a quick reset of a dialog box. So you have a photograph like this open, you go image, you go into say image size. And you make changes here. And I'm going to change the height or the resolution. Any dialog box inside of this program, you have an OK button to lock in what you did and you have a cancel button. But let's say you mess it up so bad, you just want to start all over again. So what you do is you go down to the word cancel, you close it, you reopen it because you don't want to reset everything. In Photoshop, any dialog box that you open up, if you hold on the Alt key, Alt and Windows, Option on a Mac, it will change to the word reset. And when you Alt or Option click on it, it resets the values back to the way they were when you first opened it. Tip number 10, resetting dialog boxes. Well, that's about it. Are they earth shattering? No. But if you incorporate these type of power tips into your workflow, according to studies done by university, not me, by university, you can save one hour out of every eight hours that you work by using shortcuts and power tips. One hour out of every eight. And if you organize your projects, you can save 20% of project development. One thing that we cannot do is change time. Unless you've got a spaceship that goes to the speed of light, and I don't happen to have one right now, time is set. But if you get more efficient with Photoshop, you're going to be happier, you're going to be in control, I think you're going to be more creative, and I think your designs and your photographs are going to be better.